Welcome to the Flight Club Podcast, a woman's guide to leaning out. We give you a behind-the-scenes look at business launch and growth through the stories of successful female entrepreneurs. Here's your host, Felina Hansen, founder and CEO of Hera Hub. Hello and welcome. I'm excited for my conversation today with Teresa Wells. She is one of those very rare native San Diegans, and she has a great passion for helping others. She is an integrative health and wellness coach that practices alternative healing, holistic health, and whole person approach in the health and fitness industry. She does not believe in cookie cutter, quick fix gimmicks, and is highly vocal about it. She is an effective results producing leader. Welcome to the show today, Teresa. Hi, thank you for having me. Glad to be here. Absolutely. So let's let's start with the education piece of your journey. I know you went to UC San Diego, uh, stayed close to home for your undergrad. What did you study? Um, During the undergrad there, I studied urban studies and planning with an emphasis in community dynamics and education. Interesting. Okay. What drew you to that? Um, I wanted to work with children, but I knew I did not want to be a social worker and I did not want to be a teacher. And I wanted to stay actively active in the community um, because previous positions before me while attending school and before have been um, in community organization and working for places like, say, San Diego. Awesome. Awesome. And I know a big part of your focus and your business now is in fitness. Uh, Talk about, you know, was this something from an early age that you were passionate about? How did you become interested in fitness? Um, Been fit off and on high school and college. I ran track, but I did uh, track and field. So I was a sprinter and I did long jump shot put all that stuff. And I got into more of the running piece. Um, One day they had me do the weight man's relay and that's for the shot putters and disc throwers as they call it. And I didn't know, and neither did anyone else that I was that fast. (laughs) (laughs) I I think it might've been hers. So then the track coach had put me on the four by one. Um, I ran the 200. I did the hundred meter hurdles um, and then um, continued on into college. I started at uh, Mesa College with that, but after a while, I just got tired of running track. And tra- when I transferred over to UCSD, I decided not to run and just focus on my studies. Got it. Okay, so this goes this goes way back. And <laughs> I want to jump ahead in our story a little bit. Uh, how many races or marathons have you done? Oh my, I had a hiatus of six years due to a car accident. So prior to that, I think I maybe run as far as full marathons, I've probably run close to 20 half marathons at this point, maybe closer to 40. And then there's some five K's and stuff like that mixed in in between. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. 20 marathons. That is amazing. (laughs) And, and what's your fastest time, Teresa? Uh, My fastest pace has been a seven minute mile. Wow. That's amazing. Oh my goodness. Wow. Impressive. Okay. So, um, you graduate with your urban studies and planning degree. What did you do next? Um, that's when I went and went directly and working to community organizers. I worked, like I said, with say San Diego, where we worked a lot with the cat team that worked with youth, um, with attendance issues. Mm. Um, I did a lot of community organizing work. I also was a interim executive director of a nonprofit some years ago, um, youth led and worked, did a lot of wraparound services with the county of San Diego as well. And that was prior even to getting into education where I'm at right now. Mm, Awesome. Awesome. You must have uh, experienced a lot in, in that period of time. What have you seen change in the support structures for youth over the course of your career? Well, what has started to get better 
is their focus on mental health. Um, that it was already there, but it wasn't as broad as it is now. There wasn't enough attention paid to it. It was a lot of brushing young people off going, oh, it's just hormones or, you know, saying without saying that they're just being whiny children <laughs> instead of understanding because nobody thought that a child could be depressed and didn't believe that they can be depressed or suffer from anxiety and things of that nature. So there's been a lot more education for adults around that, a lot more understanding around that, and a lot more focus because especially after COVID, you know, just the adjustment from being isolated. And there's, a, and the majority of what I do now has been surrounded around mental health um, in my field. Hmm. So yeah, I want to dive into that further because I, I'm hearing this all over the place. What are you seeing in uh, the youth that you're supporting? You know, what are you hearing from them right now? They're hurting. Mm -hmm. They're really hurting. They're hurting from things that you wouldn't even think a child would hurt from. Some of them are taking a lot of adult responsibilities that they should not be taking on. But unfortunately, that's been a part of their family dynamics. Uh, a lot of them are feeling the financial struggle of their parents. There are youth that have gone, been in domestic violence situations, um, bad relationships, whether it's family or dating relationships. There are a lot of undercover or low level intimidation from other students um, that sometimes is ignored, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And so, and a lot of times students don't say anything because they don't think anybody's going to listen to them. So all that builds up. And sometimes, you know, we're taught what happens in the house stays in the house. Don't open your mouth, depending on the, the uh, cultural background that you come from. And so all that weighs down on them and they, car they carry that with them and then come to school and they come dealing with that and then come to school and to have another kid just wanting to be mean mm -hmm. <laughs> um, to them and say, kids say very hurtful things. They say mm -hmm. some things their parents don't even believe sometimes that they say, and we have to argue with them about that, unfortunately, as well. And it, it just rips apart their entire spirit. Oh, it breaks my heart to see. I'm just, again, I'm hearing it from all directions and um, I'm glad to see that or hear rather that, you know, folks are listening and, and starting to support in different ways. That's, that's good to hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's pivot a little bit. Um, you've, you've had an amazing career supporting the next generation and, um, but you've also for about 15 years had a side hustle in fitness and health, nutrition. Talk about the work you've done there. Oh, yes. Um, what I started doing, doing some years back as I started getting back heavier um, into fitness, started going to group fitness exercise class, excuse me, myself, um, going to the gym, weight training, circumvents, machines, things of that nature. And then at some point I fell into the distance running, which I th never thought I would do. That didn't happen. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so how I does one adult. fall into <laughs> distance running? <laughs> well, in my case, I accidentally fell into it <laughs> or ran into it. <laughs> um, is because a high school that I worked at some years ago, the staff members just say, hey, let's do a fun team thing. Let's sign up for the race for literacy, which was a 5K put on um, by the center, which is an organization that's located in San Diego, supporting the LGBTQ uh, population. So we went and we did that. And I was, by then I was already taking Zumba classes, turbo kickboxing. I took a couple courses to become an instructor, pretty much living in the gym at that point. And then they decided to do this 5k. So I said, okay, what not? I'll just walk it. But I actually started training to run for it. And then a friend of mine um, was a distance runner in college. And he said that he would run with me and help me. And it just started from there. And did you love it right away? <laughs> Actually, I did. I did better than I thought. My whole goal, I told myself, no matter what, I am not going to stop. 
<laughs> I was like, I don't want to walk. I want to run this whole thing. I want to, yeah. and it, I pretty much almost <laughs> not literally, but feel like I was dying, <laughs> but I did run the entire thing. I did walk. And I said, I have to get under an hour. And I, I, I barely made it up under an hour. I think I got like 58 minutes and some seconds or something like that. So I did achieve both goals of not walking and getting under an hour. Awesome. I love it. Okay. So let's talk about tone at home fitness. How did you get into personal training? Uh, that, oh, that started with first, a uh, friend of mine was doing the, uh, working for Beachbody mm -hmm. as a independent Beachbody coach. Mm -hmm. So I started doing that, doing the Beachbody thing. And at the same time, again, I was, you know, scoring, still going to the gym um, myself and a lot of us were taking the same group fitness classes. So I started there with the beach body. And then from the beach body, that's how I fell into doing the trainings for the turbo kickboxing. And then I did uh, eventually fell in love with Zumba, became a, a Zumba instructor. And then there's a, and then I did certifications to teach boot camp classes as well, as well. And it just started building from there. And I said, you know what, let me see, let me just take a chance and see what would happen if I start trying to, not, you know, train people on my own. And I decided I didn't want to work for a gym. I mm -hmm. just wanted to run my, my own business because what I was hearing from other instructors that I became friends with, it was good, you know, if you needed to make a little extra cash here and there, but it was nothing that was going to be able to support you as far as paying the bills. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, Cause they only get paid per class and you can get paid as low as $12 to $15 an hour. And when you start off, they only have you on call. And now when I'm looking at remote work and seeing what's going on out there in the gyms with personal training, some places more so the independently owned small uh, warehouse type places are uh, sometimes you can get $20 a class, sometimes they're paying up to 40 or 50. And that's when you get lucky if you get that much. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. <laughs> All right. So you started your own business and you, you physically work with people in their homes. You go to their homes and train them. Is that right? Yes. I was doing a lot of the in-home personal training when I started uh, pre-COVID mm -hmm. and that was the majority of my, my client base. And how has it transitioned through COVID and after COVID? Um, online and stayed on, <laughs> <laughs> okay. which is fine. And most people are like, how are you going to coach online? Well, see, the thing is I was already doing stuff online okay. before COVID it even hit. So yeah. I was already familiar with it because I started um, an online school called Fit for Life using the Teachable platform. So I was already, already had courses awesome. there. Yeah. Awesome. Talk more about your courses. So my online courses are for people who want the knowledge base behind fitness and nutrition, but don't necessarily want the one-on-one -on -one personal training hands-on from a coach or a personal trainer, but they want to know about the nutrition. They want to know about the fitness, what exercises target what areas, um, the difference between metabolic workouts and functional training things of that nature. So those type of courses are there. I have another course I'm working on called uh, Self Care and Me, which is more of an integrative health and wellness approach to nutrition and exercise and focusing the first part, focusing more on the mental health and emotional well-being. Awesome. I love it. I want to talk about something I saw in your profile. Um, so you really focus on integrative fitness and nutrition, um, but there's something specific around helping people get back to their peak athletic performance because of lingering COVID symptoms. What have you seen there? Oh, wow. So a lot of the things that it affects, of course, is your rep respiratory system. Yeah. And you don't really quite fully recover, if you will. You recover in a sense that, of course, it goes away. You get better. You can be outdoors and function. But when you first get back out there, it's not the same. Uh, it takes a very long time for your respiratory system to heal, your lungs to heal, and especially if you're a runner or anyone who's doing high impact interval training, um, you're taking your body through various aerobic systems 
And so it can be very daunting on, on your heart and, and your lungs. And to have it attacked by COVID, there is, it has to rebuild itself. You have to get the strength back. So starting over again for athletes or athletes having to stop and speaking personally as an athlete, you can go into a deep depression because something is taken away from you that you really enjoy, you really love. And for a lot of us, running is our therapy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. I agree. I'm a, I'm a runner as well. And it's, uh, there's, there's no better way for me to just kind of clear my head and not, <laughs> not worry about anything else except putting mm-hmm. one foot in front of the other. So yes. amazing. We'll talk a bit about some of the things that you're working on right now, Teresa, and you know, what are, what are some of the things you're looking forward to in your business? Well, right now, what I'm doing is I'm still building and developing the course, the uh, self-care in me. Um, It's a part of my business funnel, if you will. So it's basically a six weeks program for those who may need to start off um, with actually working on their mindset, working on their emotional well-being, discovering what their interferences are, roadblocks are to coping skills and strategies to relieve their stress or anxiety um, or depression. It's not, you, it's not, um, I don't do diagnosis and I don't do treatments. Mm-hmm. So uh, if I find that's where they need to to have and I tell them they might want to make an appointment and check with their doctor. My background in um, behavioral health Mm -hmm. Um, just through me being a a secondary school counselor for so many years, and I've done K through college, that's actually given me the background that I need um, as far as to be able to uh, um, observe, assess, and refer. And that's what sets me apart from other personal trainers and nutrition coaches that do not have that background. And so I wanted to develop a course where um, people can come in and actually work out, like I said, what their interferences are, what their roadblocks are, learn how to identify what are my life stressors? How am I living? Am I taking care of me? Am I giving myself the timeouts that I need? Or am I completely drained and burned out and about to have a nervous breakdown because I've given so much of myself, I have nothing left in my tank. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I failed to point out that you have a master's degree from University of San Diego in education and school counseling. So I love to hear how you're wrapping all of this together. I know sometimes it's tough as entrepreneurs when we have our our day job and then we have our, you know, night job, so to speak, or our side hustle. And it is beautiful when you can really try to bring those things together as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. I love it. Great. So you're working on developing the course or continuing to develop this particular course to add to your repertoire of courses. What else are you looking forward to in your business, Teresa? Oh, what I love the most is that the personal training, the one-on-one personal training Mm -hmm. uh, with, with clients, it helps develop relationships. I love the relationship building, maintaining those relationships. And from some of my clients, we become friends and we still keep in touch. I mean, one of my very, two of my very first clients, um, we, we don't keep in touch as much, you know, life happens, but every now and then we, we touch bases with each other to see how we're doing. And one of my former uh, clients, she's in the Navy mm. and when she's been in for years, even when she left on deployment, we would keep in touch through email, you know, do the Google spreadsheets for a training program so she can keep up with her training and nutrition. Um, and she even started running marathons. So I helped her with an online program to train for a half marathon. And then she kept on running from there. She checked in with me to let me know just recently she completed another race. And without her even knowing, it was kind of like we went in sync. She's now a Zumba instructor. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. <laughs> uh-huh. So I thought that was funny. And you know, that, you know, now we have all these other things in common that we didn't, you know, have before. Um, so I like w- love working with runners, of course, because I'm a runner myself. So having those uh, programs for runners, especially us older runners, because as we age, we lose our speed and things like that. And a lot of programs that people find online are not made for older runners. 
Mm, interesting. And, how so? Yeah. Why is how, well, t- give me an example, I guess. Uh, so the programs that you can find, because sometimes there's programs, uh, running programs you can find through Nike, Garmin, Connect, those mm-hmm. type of things. They are usually uh, basic building block programs for anywhere from, you know, couch to 5K to mm-hmm. intermediate runners, but they're for young, younger runners in that there's a lot more speed workouts, a lot more running within the program, and you won't see any weight training that's Mm. implemented into the program. You should be at least minimum two days a week, preferably three days implementing some type of weight training, but that's sports specific, not just going in a gym and, you know, throwing weights around, not knowing what you're doing or what type of weight training program you should be focused on to help build the power and strength you need and to keep you from your bones from deteriorating because the more cardio you do, it eats away at your muscle and your bones and the weight training is what prevents that or, hmm. or slows it down, um, if you will. And as we get older, our bones start to get frail anyway, if we're not working out and eating healthy and all that good stuff. And then, of course, that's when we end up hurting ourselves more easily, breaking things more easily, bones and things because of the bone deterioration and breakdown. So you want to make sure there's weight training implemented in any marathon training program, even for beginners and some cross training. And for running in the running world, cross training is anything that has nothing to do with running. So swimming, Mm -hmm. uh, a hit class, a cycling class. Cycling is very good for runners because it uh, exercises muscles in the legs and hips that running does not. Mm. And you want to make sure that you build up those larger muscles with weight training to support the joints, such as your ankles and your knees um, and strengthen your your hips and your abdominal muscles and your glutes to support your lower back. Because if you're a heel striker, there's going to be a lot of pounding in that vibration going up through the heel, through your legs and into your back. I am a hill striker. <laughs> I have tried to run <laughs> on my toes and I just can't do it. <laughs> oh man. I love it. I love it. Well, let's uh, have folks reach out to you if they're interested in learning more. What's the best way for them to get in touch with you, Teresa? Um, most of my time is on Instagram. Awesome. So people can find me if they're more interested in the running. Mm -hmm. Um, both the running and sports specific nutrition that's catered for what they're doing as an athlete, they can find me, um, on IG at sporty spice wells, the nickname, one of my friends gave me and it's stuck. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) So they can go on IG and find me at sporty spice wells on there. They will see my logo, which is a picture of two runners. So they will see that on there. Um, if they want to do more of my build a better you fitness and nutrition program, which is a six week program we talked about as far as looking more at nutrition and fitness through a holistic approach, um, that's on, um, they can just put coach Teresa Wells and then they'll see a picture of me there with, uh, doing a little kettlebell, uh, stance. Look and fit. Yes, girl. (laughs) I love it. Awesome. Thanks so much for your time, Teresa. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you for joining this week's episode of Flight Club sponsored by Hera Hub. We look forward to sharing more success stories with you soon.